Another day older and you're deeper in debt. Well, I've been saying I was going to try and start making more videos. And so, uh, this is my second one today. And welcome to Issues Unite. I'm going to call this one Dead Cat Bounce. Do you have any idea what a dead cat bounce is? Well, look at the stock market right now. The stock market dropped uh, another 256 points today. And what a dead cat bounce is, is something in economics where the stock market is, it keeps on uh, dropping and, and then rebounding, but there's nothing behind the rebound. Right now, they're claiming that the stock market is declining because of the coronavirus. And that's not true. I mean, there's, uh, obviously, there's an effect going on, but not enough, not what's justifying this. This has been coming for quite some time. A lot of economists have been talking for years about how overvalued the stock market is and how highly leveraged the banks are. Long before, you know, they've blamed the trade war with China, but they don't explain what was going on in 2016 before the trade war with China. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, uh, the Federal Reserve has been bailing out Wall Street for the past 11 years. And then they amped it up starting late last year with the uh, repo bailout. They're just printing tens of billions of dollars a month to bail out the repo market. Uh, just creating money out of thin air. Then we saw this massive decline, you know, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And so the Federal Reserve steps in and issues an emergency uh, core interest rate drop. And there's talking about another interest rate drop in the very near future, two drops in less than a month, which will bring the core interest rate down to between 0 0.5 and 0.75%. This is the last bullet out of the gun that the Fed can use. I'm not going to attack the Fed too much because they're doing what they can within the scope of their capability. It's not like the Fed can turn around and hand American citizens billions of dollars. That would take Congress to do that. And Congress isn't going to do that. All they're concerned about is they're rich buddies on Wall Street. But the Fed bailout of the repo market has been a bailout to keep failing banks from collapsing. And those failing banks were failing because they had been issuing dangerous, risky loans. Well, by bailing them out, all that managed to do was to encourage the banks to issue more risky loans. By bailing out indirectly, they wound up bailing out the stock market, which is why the stock market has been so high. I really feel bad for the people that bought into the stock market it, you know, at the peak, because those are the ones that are going to lose the most. Yeah, but hopefully, mostly that will be people that can afford it. Mostly. 
And what this has really done was to encourage investors, speculators on Wall Street, to start liquidating their positions and to keep liquidating their positions. The money was getting pumped in and they were taking it out. And that's what's happening right now. I've been talking for several years about this stair step phenomenon where, you know, you see a drop one day and a small increase the next day and then a more of a drop the next day and then a small increase. That is people buying the dip and then cashing out the next day. They're squeezing the last pennies out of the stock market before they sell everything and walk away with it. And that's what's ultimately going to happen. All of this bailout of the stock market right now, uh, this does no good whatsoever. Even if you use the coronavirus as a rationale for this, it, especially if you use the coronavirus for this. If you consider the coronavirus, well, the supply chain is still disrupted. To bail out the stock market right now doesn't mean that, that anything is going to change. The, the stock, you know, stocks and profits are not going to go up. You're not going to be hiring people to produce things or sell things when you can't get the raw materials or you can't get the goods to sell. So this is not benefiting the economy in any way. This is only stalling the inevitable collapse of the stock market, which has been inevitable for well over a decade. So that's a dead cat bounce. You've got companies that have been laying off, declaring bankruptcy, and cutting wages, cutting benefits for years. The only reason any wages have gone up is because of people working multiple jobs. You know how you create jobs? You take a full-time job, you cut it in half and make two part-time jobs. Boom, you created a job. But, yeah, so, now you don't have to pay benefits to a full-time worker, too. That's how you create jobs. There has been no explanation for why wages are down or flat, and the labor participation rate is down, and yet, you know, corporate profits are the highest they've ever been. The stock market is the highest it's ever been. Pub, you know, social support programs are, have been in decline, getting cut. They use the tax cut, the GOP tax cut, as a rationale for this, but that money was never used for what it was intent, meant to do. There were no stipulations attached to that tax cut. So, of course, it wasn't going to be used the way that they said it was going to be used. They didn't create jobs with it. They bought back their own stock and jacked up the profits for the stockholders, the CEOs and major investors. But now this is all coming due. There is no place else to go but down from here. 
Sooner or later, that cat stops bouncing. And it has no strength. It has no life left to it. You can throw that cat off the roof. It'll bounce a couple of times. But eventually, it's going to stop bouncing. That's why it's called Dead Cat Bounce. So like I said, this has been coming for quite some time. Before the coronavirus ever happened, you know, I was posting articles online and on my group on Facebook called The Coming Crash. And I'll post a link to that below where I was explaining that and different sources were explaining that manufacturing was down globally. Shipping freight has been down globally. Orders for products have been down globally. Banks around the world have been declining. Look at Deutsche Bank. And they're on the verge of collapse. And they're one of the biggest banks on the planet. And all these banking systems are intertwined. Don't expect the stock market to turn around. There is very little or nothing left that the Federal Reserve has left in their arsenal that they can use. The only way to save an economy is by saving the people of that economy. And the government has refused to do that and has in fact done the opposite. They have been saving the Corporations, they have not been saving us. They've been taking more and more away from us to save the corporations. We all know this. You know, they talked about, uh, Trump talked about U.S. Steel building new plants. U.S. Steel didn't build any new plants. In fact, they just stopped, you know, they halted production in several of their furnaces. Since he said that they were going to build new plants, the day that he said that they were building new plants, they came out with a press release. No, we're not. So, there's no place else to go from here. You know, look at all the companies that are laying off for GM, GE, yeah, uh, carrier moving places out um, to Mex jobs out to Mexico, uh, Harley Davidson to Thailand, uh, you know. But even with them moving the jobs out, they're barely going to be able to support those jobs because consumer spending is done around the world. This is it. This is crunch time. Now, gold has been up. It's been gone up by over $400 in the past month. Silver, I expect to eventually follow suit, but Goldman Sachs, you know, if we, you've been paying attention, owns 80% of silver uh, interests around globally, and they've been manipulating the silver price to keep it down. Eventually, when the stock market collapses, that's when I expect silver to rise. If you got money to put into gold and silver, I say do that right now. Pull your money out of the stock market. I can't tell you what to do with your money, but this is what I'm. That this is what I advise: pull your money out of the stock market, even if you, if you made twenty percent. And, you know, at the height, 
and you've lost 10% of that 10%, if you pay a 2% premium, you've still made 8%. You need to do it before you don't even get back what you put in. Sooner or later, we are going to start seeing more bankruptcies and more closures. And that's not far off. It's going to happen very, very soon. So it's best if you act on this now. All right. That's it for today. Okay, something was eating my CPU bandwidth. All right, so I'll ask you again. Uh, if you like my content, please help me support my channel and my writing. And I'm still trying to get back to increasing my amount of content once again. Uh, at least five articles or videos uh, per week and just sometimes I get way too busy for it and I will put the link below one dollar a month would help more than you know and so if I put out five articles or piece of content per week that's 20 a month that's five cents per and that would really help me a lot. And we have to support independent media over, over corporate media that spews nothing but propaganda. We've got to do that. Even if it's not me, support independent media producers, please. All right, that's it. Hope you have a good day. Have a good weekend.